So, gentlemen, my mind is quite made up. Next month, when my grandson marries, the Drake fortune, all my interests in the Drake Industries, go to him as my wedding present. With you gentlemen, as a board of trustees to guide him, he'll carry on in the best traditions of the Drake family. I think you're making a great mistake. He has in abundance those qualities so necessary to his new position. Poise and dignity. Level-headedness, responsibility, respectability, dependability. In short, gentlemen, a model young man in whom you may well share my unbounded faith. You'll excuse me a minute, gentlemen. Have you found that rapscallion grandson of mine yet, Roberts? Not yet, sir. And I'm down to the last nightclub, sir. Yes? 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 No. They want to know if we've seen Mr. William lately, sir. They? Who is it? The riot squad? Who is it? Oh, the hula heaven, sir. Heaven? What heaven? One of the newer nightclubs, sir. Mr. William was there, sir. And when he left, he took the Hawaiian orchestra with him. <laughs> of you. You're like a lot of mice. You need a leader. I tell you, my friends, you're heading for perdition and eternal despair. And ye who pass by and heed not my answer are hurrying to the devil. That means you, mister. Who, me? What? What's that? Me, me? Yes, you. Certainly it's you I mean it. Look at him. Standing there in his high hat and fine clothes. Worth more than the man that's in them. Morning papers. Shut your trap, Darby McGraw. Never mind her. Look at him leaning there so grand. A blooming plutocrat. Come down here to show his riches. And where did he get those riches? Tell us that, lad. Whose money bought those fine clothes? Uh, I believe it was my father's money. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And where did he get it? He worked for his money, didn't he? No. No, he got it from his father. <laughs> <laughs> and where did his father get it? From the poor, I've no doubt. No. He got it from his father. <laughs> <laughs> and he, that's my great-grandfather, he, believe it or not, got his from honest toil. That's a fine old family tradition for you. Three generations now since any of them did a bit of work. And what would his great-grandfather think now if he could see the product of his slaving and labor? This loafer and wastrel, a parasite, Living on the fat of the land. Just a minute. Oh, let me pop her. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Her. If any more speeches are made about me, I'll make them. You've called me a plutocrat and a clothes dummy, and a parasite, and a loafer, and a perfect specimen of a wasted life. Didn't you? I did. Yeah. Uh, well, wait a minute. Help me up here, please. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. The professor's absolutely right. <laughs> Well, I'm still not convinced that we ought to sign, Colonel. It's my dearest wish. I assure you, I'm not going to change my mind. Oh, very well. <clears throat> Put your name here. I've already made a statement to the newspapers. It'll appear in the morning editions. Now, when you gentlemen have signed, all we need is Bill's signature, and the Drake Industries are his. Something tells me this is a mistake. Mac, Mac, don't be such a pessimist. 
And I tell you, my friends, when I take over the William Addington Drake Industries, I'll share my wealth. Yay! Yeah, listen, listen, I live on what I work for. If there'll be no parasites in our family, the woman I marry, which I shan't do until I can support a wife on what I earn myself, will do her own housework. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, right. we'll start from scratch. We'll not only share the wealth, I'll distribute it. Thank you, sir. The rest, sir? Oh. Maybe I can sleep. No. I doubt if you ever sleep again, sir. Do you mind if I... No. Ah. You plastered last night, Roberts? No, sir. Oh, then it must have been me. If you have any doubts, sir, look at the front lawn for verification. The front lawn? Oh, Roberts. The front lawn. One of us is crazy. You don't do things like this to me, sir. Early in the morning. Oh, Roberts. They're waiting for you, sir. You promised them money. Money? I... Pr I remember vaguely there was a man. Beg pardon, sir? There is a man. You brought him home with you, sir. Oh. He slept in the pink room at the end of the hall, sir. Oh. I fed him, sir. I fed him twice. But he's beginning again, sir. Beginning again? Beginning to what? To clamor, sir. Oh, how he clamors, sir. And shouts. Goodness <laughs> gracious me, sir. What? Uh, oh. I wish I could remember just what I did. It's all in the paper, sir. Look. Uh, Robert, is Miss Millicent here? Your fiance has just arrived, sir. She was besieged by reporters. At the moment, sir, she's having a cup of coffee and a bit of hysterics. Where is that idiot? He means me. Oh, no, sir, he means me. Uh -huh. He has other names for you, sir. A Bolshevik, that's what he is. And I announced he'd become the head of the firm, take over all my business. Well, what about me? I announced that I'd marry him. Date all set, invitations up, presents pouring in. Robert, is he up yet? Yes and no, sir. Mostly no. And throw him out. Yes, sir. I don't want to see him. I never want to see him again. No, sir. And Robert, call the police. Send that mob away. Chase those reporters. Tell the operator to cut off the phone. There was a call from London, sir. London? From the Red Bulletin, sir. A radical press, I should think, sir. They wanted to know if you were in accord with Mr. Williams, sir. And do you favor a five-year plan? Oh. oh, they've been calling me since daylight. I even had an offer to go in the movies. It's humiliating. Morning. You disgraced us. Everybody, oh, your family! Look! Beg pardon, sir, but wouldn't we be less conspicuous in the dining room, sir? You'd give away a fortune, you... You blockhead! It was my money you were so generously giving away. Mine, mine. You have not a dime. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, you haven't anything really to be sorry for until I say my little piece. <laughs> I'm through. Now wait, Millicent, be calm. I am calm. And as far as our engagement is concerned, I just hope I never see you again. Oh, but Millie, listen, I'll call up the papers. I'll retract what I said. You said all you're going to say. Here, yeah, Millicent, wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hiya, Jerry boy. Looks like we're kind of in Dutch. Oh, Roberts, quick, get me out of here. Where to, sir? Anywhere, my head is coming off. But you can't leave the house, sir, with that mob outside. I'd rather face a dozen mobs than Millie. Get me out of here. I have it, sir. What? There's a laundry wagon in the service court. Oh, that's well. I'll go up and chase my clothes to the You can't go that way, sir. They are on the upstairs balcony, too, well, sir. Well, I'll go up that way. But where to, sir? Well, anywhere. Oh, won't you need me with you, sir? I always have. have I gotta be going. At least I can hide alone. 
It's the only thing to do. Ring every paper in town. Yes, I'm going to. But if he doesn't back me up this time, I'll... He'll have to. I'll have him phone, too. We'll treat the matter lightly. Take the whole thing as a joke. You know, be jolly about it. Oh, yes. I'll be jolly about it, all right. But if he double-crosses me again, I'll... Uh, hello. Society editor, please. Take my advice. If the worst comes to the worst, and it probably will, try the old house. We don't own it anymore, Robert. But your father left it to charity, sir. Approach it from that angle. Besides, you were born there, sir. And it may prove a port in a storm, sir, if you want to hide out, as they say. All right, I'll try it. At least until I get organized. Perhaps a little charity wouldn't be so bad for a day or two. I'd better trade those clothes for something less frivolous, sir. Here you are, sir. No, Robert, I couldn't. But it's only two and a quarter, sir. And you, you are quite used to eating, sir. Here comes the laundry. Lots of excitement this morning, huh, Robert? Quite a joke. Joke me out while the whole country's talking about it. Everything okay, Mr. Drake? Uh, fine, thanks. See you later. Of course you know Bill Drake. Just another one of his practical jokes. <laughs> well, yes, certainly you may quote me. Just say the wedding will take place as announced. And uh, uh, do give it prominent space, won't you? Thank you. Practical joke. Well, here we are. Swell, so listen, will you unlock this back door for me? What? Me get out of here and what I'm wearing? Oh, no. Well, I guess you'll have to. It won't open from the inside. Oh, now that's carrying things too far. Ah, come on. Well. I'll do it, but I don't like it. Thanks a lot. Now, not a word now, remember. Don't worry. I'll see that you get well paid. Yeah, I read about that. <laughs> I ought to get plenty for running around like this, Mr. Drake. Hey, shh. Smith. Bill Smith from now on. Oh, clever. <laughs> and our name, too, isn't it? Well, good luck, Mr. Smith. Good luck to you. <laughs> Aren't you pretty? Aren't you lovely? Get in that car! Get out of here! <laughs> and your car, your car! You're back in the traffic! <laughs> Jerry? Jerry, what are you doing here? Jerry, listen. Go home, will you? Huh? I'll tell you, be a good guy. I want you to do me a favor, will you? Look, I want you to go right straight home. Okay, come on. Uh, oh. Well, what do you want? I'd like to see the lady who runs the nursery, please. This isn't any place for men. I agree with you, definitely. And I hate men anyway. Well, you're a little young yet. Listen, about the lady that runs this place. And Miss Carol hates men too, and I love her and I'm going to protect her. I bet if she had you to protect her, she wouldn't mind talking to me a minute. I bet you could fix everything so it'd be all right. Mm-hmm. I could fix everything all right. And you'll wish I had. She's the meanest, nastiest, cruelest woman in the whole world of men. She, she beats men. She, she breaks their arms and their legs. She, what about their necks? You wait there in the office, and I'll bet when she sees you, she'll gouge your eyes out. Well, I'll be right back, Jerry. Hmm, nice little puppy guy. Hey. Abdomen flat. Very good. And you have it, Miss Carol. There's an escaped criminal in the office. An escaped criminal? Now, Dodie, well, come and see for yourself. Dodie, just a minute. Tune in, I'll be right back. What is the meaning of all this? You'll see. He's a terrible looking man. And I know he strangled somebody and killed them and put them in a suitcase. I can tell. He's a mad monster. Oh, you're always imagining ridiculous things. Well, you come and see for yourself. 
Dorothy, oh. what did I tell you? Doesn't he look like a horrible fiend? <laughs> I don't look very well, do I? Dodie, I think you'd better run along, dear. Oh, no, I'm going to stay right here and report the crime to the police. The only crime I've connected with is not eating. I'm sorry, but this is a children's nursery. Yeah, it? I suppose I do look a little grown up to be taken care of here. But look, I thought there might be some work I could do. You know, some dishwashing or cleaning or moving or... Well, there's a woman here who does the work, uh, Mrs. Murphy. Well, maybe there's Did something you... a little strenuous, Mrs. Murphy, would like a man to help her with. Well, well, Mrs. Murphy isn't here just now, oh. and if you just... Well, couldn't you find something for me to do until we can get her professional opinion? Well? A little work and a little food, and I wouldn't mind being thrown out. Oh, couldn't you? All right. Thank you. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh. It's this way. Where are you going? Oh. Well, I've got a friend who's hungry, too. Come on, Terry. Come on in. Oh, lovely, Joe. <laughs> if you let him stay, I'll work double. Oh, looks like you'll have to work triple. <laughs> yeah, and I bet he's gonna bite everybody in the house. Yeah, I bet I won't let him bite you. I like Jerry. I wouldn't want him to get blood poisoning. Oh, smarty, huh? Come on. I tell you, I have nothing to say. My grandson left town to avoid being pestered by you newspaper men. Certainly the wedding will take place. You can't have a wedding without a groom. Roberts, I still suspect you know something. Colonel Drake, if you don't call the police, I will. Millie, Millie, be calm. Hey, you look just dandy. But supposing Bill's been kidnapped? By now, the kidnappers will be paying us to take him back. Well, I'm not worried about Bill. I'm thinking of my wedding. All right, all right. Make us look more ridiculous than ever. Police headquarters, please. <sighs> Quiet, puppy. Quiet. Quiet. Stop barking, will you? Quiet. Of course I didn't. That's right. Blame it on your dog. Now, look, I'm in no humor to take any cracks from you. Oh, tough guy, huh? Say, listen, who are you anyway, besides being a criminal? I've had enough trouble this last week. How'd you feed up? Trouble, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, what have you been doing the past week? Nothing. You better take yourself and your mud out of here. Blisters on your hands from scrubbing the floor. Pretty soft hands for a convict. Oh, here you are. Are you being a good girl? He just bit my dog. Oh, you must be hungry. <laughs> Maybe I'd better tell Mrs. Murphy to hurry up that dinner. Oh, thanks a lot. Hmm, stiff back, huh? Not used to working, are you, Mr. Criminal? Look here, Doody. The name is Doody. Uh, uh, uh. The two pins, I'd throw you right out of here. I belong here, Smarty. You and about 30 others. Is that so? Well, shows how dumb you are. The others get to go home at night to their mothers. Why don't their mothers take care of them in the daytime? Because their mothers have to work for a living. And their mothers have to work for a living because some man wouldn't support them or, or up and died or, or ran out on them or something. That's why. And that's why I don't like men. So you don't like men? Huh? Oh, I loathe and despise them. And if I had my way, I'd have every man on this earth killed. Killed? Yeah, killed. Accredited. There'd be, there'd be blood all over everything. Buckets of it. Well. How come you don't go home nights? Because I haven't got a home. I'm one of those kids nobody came back for. And if it hadn't have been for Miss Carroll, goodness knows what have happened to me. You kind of like Miss Carroll, don't you? I'd cut my right arm off for her. Both of them if she wanted me to. I'd chop my body into little bits. Oh, Jody. Yes, Miss Carroll. Face and hands, dear. Dinner's ready. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You all right? Oh, quite all right. The floor's so clean. If you think this floor's clean, why well, let's see what I do with my plate. Well, follow me to the kitchen. I'll be with you in a minute. All right. Now that we've found out how the other half lives, we're going home. Ooh. Of course, Miss Carroll's sort of nice. We'll come back and see her occasionally. But, oh, Jerry, this business of trying to earn your own living's taught me a lesson. From now on, I'm going to be able to appreciate life at home. Hmm. 
They must have uh, pretty bad manners where you come from. And do you always talk to yourself that way? Oh, but I wouldn't expect a prisoner from the chain gang to be very refined. You know, there was one thing I liked about the chain gang. There weren't any little girls on it. I knew it. I knew you were an escaped convict. <laughs> but if you dare to bite my little dog again, you'll go right back. Oh, by the way, Miss Carroll would like to see you on your way out. Come on, Jerry. Well, anyway, Mrs. Murphy, you've been working awfully hard. I've decided to give you someone to help. Oh, it's that young man you left dinner for. You know, he can sort of do the heavy work for uh, you. Excuse me, the little what's-her-name said you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, Mr. Smith. Oh, Mr. Smith. This is Mrs. Murphy. Mrs. Murphy. Well, I'm glad to know you. You know something? You know, you look just like my cousin Lily. Got a blonde hair, got a little finger like that. He got a clothes just like that, you know. He looks just like you, know. Angela. Eh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, what for you laugh, huh? It just struck me as being a little odd, Mrs. Murphy should be an attendant. He's a no funny. My old man is the Irish papers. Then the Pat Murphy's, you know. Oh. But that for look, he's no good for nothing. Angela, gotta check. Angela, that'll do. Yes, sir, ma'am. <laughs> you know, I think we have good news for you. Yeah? We've decided to let you stay here and work. Huh? Well, you proved this afternoon you're a very good worker. Oh, I'm not really a good worker. This afternoon, that was just sort of an accident. Don't you want the job? Well, I... Don't you ever want a home with decent clothes and plenty to eat? That was sort of my plan. Well, you certainly can't get it without working for it, can you? Well, it isn't that I don't want oh, it. Oh, very it's... well. If you don't want the job, I'm certainly not going to beg you to take it. I'm sorry I wasted your time. And I'm sorry I wasted mine. I'm sure I have better things to do than to bother with someone who's determined to be utterly useless. Wait a minute. Well, well, well if you have no more to say than that, I wish you'd please go now. Well, I'm not so sure I want to go with you feeling the way you do about me. Well, how do you expect me to feel? Well, you've been nice to me, and I'd rather you thought I was worth being nice to, so if that job's still open, I'll take it. Very well. Doggy! Jody! Yes, Mr. Cook! Perhaps you'll show Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith to the attic room. Why, well, I'd be glad to, if you'll come too. Oh, all right. Dodie's always been afraid of the attic. I hope you won't mind. Uh -huh. It's where our cleaning woman is to sleep. Uh -huh. Yes, Miss Hollis. Yeah? Jerry? Now, just be careful. Follow me. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Matt, you better not. <laughs> there are no switches in these old rooms. There. Up there. Oh. oh. Is it broken? Oh, no. Good. Hey, this room doesn't look haunted to me. I beg your pardon? What? Uh, uh, uh. I was afraid I might scare your kids tomorrow with these whiskers. Oh. Well, we'll worry about that in the morning. Good night. Good night. Well, see you in the morning. Yes, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> hey, what do you think uh, I am? The alarm uh, clock is flex. Why you no get up? Uh, why? Is the place on fire? There's a no fire, but the kids is going to be here pretty soon. The day are going to have the layoffs. You mean you're going to take the day off? That's just the word I say, the layoffs. Don't you speak it English? Okay, swell. I'll take the layoffs tomorrow. Hey, you know something? I got a razor for you, you a know. A razor? Oh, gee, that's swell. Mrs. Murphy, thank you very much. I got it from the drugstore, you know. I get all the castor oils, you know. Mm -hmm. And the grocery man across the street will give you lots of nice clothes. I think he's going to fetch it, oh, too, you know. Oh, that's awfully nice. <laughs> hey, look out for that razor. Sharp like anything. Uh -huh. Don't cut your throat. Uh -huh. Hey! Sir. No turnover. Get up! Okay, Murphy. I will. Okay. Oh. Oh, no. Hey, why you don't get out of that bed when I tell you? I'll for your lady like that, okay, huh? Okay, Murphy. Okay. But it's too bad the grocery mans didn't donate a pair of pajamas. Hey! Come on, Jerry. Wake up. Don't you look ducky? Huh? I didn't expect to find you here. Oh, you mean you thought that after a night's sleep, I'd figure I'd get the job in a moment of weakness, is that it? I thought you might regret it when you woke up. Sorry. I thought 
you might regret it when you woke up. Well, I wake up, maybe I will. Only be sure you get all the dust in the corner. Dust? All the dust yeah. in the corner. Oh, please. Say, all this doesn't go on quite so early every morning, does it? Yes. And when you finish, come out and back. I have a barrel of ashes I want you to take in front. A barrel of yeah, ashes. Yeah, I know, a barrel of ashes. Yes. Yeah. No wonder your cleaning woman left. Is it heavy? Oh, no, I suppose that cleaning woman just juggled this around like a ping pong ball. Where do I put it? Over there by the curb. Uh, Nice morning. Yeah, but not for working. <laughs> Is the paper this morning, little one? Any news? Oh, nothing much, but uh, somebody tore a piece out of the front page. Yeah, I know. I did that. Oh, must have been something uh, you didn't like. That's right. What? Mud. Oh. Well, I knew it was some kind of dirt. trouble again, Miss Carol. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Hello, Stevie. Hi, Miss Hale. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Maggie. Hello. Mr. Smith, will you take care of them until I get finished here? Yeah, gladly. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who are you? I'm Maggie McGonagall. You're a new here, aren't you? Mm-hmm. So is he. Ah, your little brother, hmm? No, he's my uncle. Your uncle? He is, so. My grandmother McGonagall kept right on having kids till about three years ago. That makes my father and old Stevie brothers, and I'm his niece. And Grandma wants to know if Stevie can stay here today. She's sort of tired. Grandma's got a right to be tired. Sure, but I have a right to be tired. <laughs> well, did you take good care of the Mr. Smith? I'm a born gun. Oh, all right. Everybody out in the playground. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh, good morning. Good morning. I'm Eva Freed. How do you do, Mrs. Freed? Oh, this is our Mr. Smith. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? And this is my son. Do you feel like saying good morning, Precious? He doesn't feel like saying good morning. I'm a problem child. You think so? I've got a little girl named Dodie I want you to meet. His name is Manchild. Manchild? Yes. You see, on Kelly Can choose his own name, I absolutely refuse to have it saddled with a possible misnomer. Why, it might affect his whole personality. Mother was flying out, darling. You'll be kind to everyone, won't you, my lamb? Oh, you'll be with him all day. How I envy you. Well, goodbye. 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 Come on, Manny. Where do you get that Manny stuff? Uh -huh. 
Yes. Okay, Colonel. Yes, I'll do that. Goodbye, sir. Old man Drake again? Calls up every 15 minutes and talks for an hour. Just wants us to find the kid, but not to let anybody know we're looking for him. Well, I got something on the case. Call from Akron, Ohio. They picked up a guy with a St. Bernard dog, but his name ain't Drake. That's a big help. Uh, they want to know what to do. Tell them to release the man and hold the dog for questioning. I'm sorry, honey. I wish somebody spanked me when I was a kid. I have no doubt you needed it. You wouldn't like to jump me over your knee right now, would you? Look, it's time for the nap. I want you to sit in the sleeping room with them. And be sure they're quiet and have a good rest. There's no way I'd rather see those kids than sound the sleep. This is one time you can depend on me. I hope. You know, we're not allowed to admit visitors while the children are sleeping. We couldn't go away without seeing them. We want to make a nice, comprehensive report to our Brooklyn Better Babies Club. <laughs> you don't leave them alone while they're resting, do you? Oh, no. We have our Mrs. Smith who stays with them while they're sleeping. Really? Shh. It's this room. Young generation's too much for an old man like me. Oh, Miss Carlton, I'm so oh. sorry. Miss Ray, I there's just no excuse at all. Oh, Mr. Smith! Yeah. Oh, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I was just feeding the furnace a little snack to hold until morning. What was there? Anything special? Well, no, I I thought maybe after the way I talked to you, you'd run out on the job. <laughs> Not me. Not after only four days, anyway. I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. Would it have made very much difference to you if I had run out? Yes. Yes? Yes. Because you forgot to take the rubbish out, and the back porch is all cluttered up. The rubbish collector doesn't come until Friday. I found out next door from one of the other janitors. You're not a janitor. That's what I say. I'm not a janitor. No. No. Uh, just what am I? Well, I don't know. Sometimes you show too much breathing. Too much breathing? Well, for a trap. Uh. You must have come from a pretty good family, really. Oh, very good. Very good. If you go back far enough. Well, you have seen better days, haven't you? Yeah, in a way. I'm so glad you're that kind. I mean, it's much easier to become something when you've got something to start with. And someone, I mean, something to work for. Oh, well, the things you really enjoy are those you earn. You didn't come down here just to talk rubbish, did you? Well, I wanted to talk to somebody and go to the sleep. Oh. Now that you know me, you don't mind if I hope you're beginning to sort of like me today. Oh, I know. You've tried so hard here. And been so nice. And so clumsy with the children. And funny with that mouth. 
I just can't help liking you. Carol. Uh, Miss Carol, Miss Carol, I can't sleep. I'm afraid of the rain. I'm scared to death. I'm sorry. I have to go. Well, you've been awfully encouraging. Well, I know, Mr. Smith, that if you work hard and don't get discouraged, you won't have to shovel coal all your life. Thanks, Miss Carol. Mm -hmm. And you'll be right back breaking up rocks. Don't it? And I mean every word I say, too. You get out to bed. Now, give me one of you hanging on the rail. Mind, we wanted to look as if there were really going to be a wedding. Well, ain't there? There is a bill's above ground. If, and if there is, my grandson's going to be chairman of the board of directors in spite of all your protests. Now, there you go. Prove it to see how impressed you are. Will you, young fellow? Quiet, quiet, quiet. How do you expect me to take this when you're all gabbing and moving around? Now, hold it. Still? Quiet, quiet. Now, what is it you want, Roberts? Would it be premature, Miss, to ask what kind of flowers you want for the decoration? I don't care what kind, Robert. Sunflowers! Get out, Get out, I'm going nuts here. Say, you, will you smile? You know, look happy. Give me that look of anticipation. No, try to look like a lady. Why, you? Say, that was a Lulu. Yeah, that's a Lulu, all right. Now all we gotta do is find the groom. Five and five or ten. Your first week's salary. And the best money anybody's earned in our family in nearly a hundred years. What did you say? Oh, don't pay attention to me. I talk to myself, Jerry, pictures on the wall. You know, I'm not sure I ought to take this. Well, why not? You certainly worked hard enough for it. <laughs> Almost enough to get married on, isn't it? What's that? Uh, I'd better get to my window washing. Will you come up and see that I do it right? Yes, I'll be right up. Listening again? Uh-huh, but don't pay any attention to me. I'm just a little Vodinsky. I won't. Well, oh, Jody, will you get some papers from Mr. Smith to put on the floor? Now, what's the matter? Well, I've been thinking things over. What things? About him. I don't trust him. Don't he? Why don't you like him? Oh, I don't know. I don't like him because uh, he's a, a crook and a, a thief and a robber and a killer and, and a child spanker. And anyway, he's not your equal. And besides, he's coming between us. And I do love you so much, Miss Carroll. Bless you, dear. I love you, too. And as long as we know that, nothing can come between us. Do you understand that? I'm sorry. Now, will you get the papers? All right. But just for you. No. She can like him if she wants to. All I care. He's nothing but a, a long-legged, mop-eared. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew right from the start. The bigot of an honest wedding will take place as announced declaring Miss Bonham. When interviewed at the home of her financy grandfather, the bride-to-be said, <laughs> just wait till I hear what I've got to say. What will I do? I mean it. Yeah, for the first time in my life, I, I feel like somebody. Well, if you could just see yourself, you'd realize that a long way you are from being anything but plain Mr. Smith. Well, I'm a different guy than I was before I came here, I was saying. Oh, is it? Oh, be careful. I'm all right. Oh. See, you know, come to think of it, you have shown quite an improvement. Yeah, I owe it all to you, Carol. No. Oh, really. I... Now, be careful. <laughs> yeah, really, I am very grateful. Oh, I did nothing, really. You did it all. All you needed was a chance in life. You know, when you're really grateful to somebody, you can't help liking them, can you? No, I guess not. Now, and when that somebody you like gives you some sort of ambition, ambition for the first time in your life, well, you'll admire that person, won't you? Yes, and, I guess so. And when that person you admire happens to be, oh, very lovely to look at, well, it just stands the reason you've got to be fond of her. Oh, yes, but if you've only known that person a few days... Seven days. Seven days, three hours, and thirty-four minutes. Why shouldn't I be fond of you? <laughs> well, I... You know, I find that sometimes when people say I'm very fond of you, they're just too bashful and shy to say I love you. Oh. Yes, I, 
I guess you're right. Well, that's the you know? trouble with me. I'm too bashful and shy. Mm. 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 I'll get even with you, Bill Smith. I'll soon get you out of here. Hmm, I'll get even... Hello? Uh, could I talk to William Drake, the force financier, please? I beg your pardon? Who? Oh, you mean Miss Bonham. Oh, oh, yes. A very childish voice, Miss, belonging possibly to some society editor. Oh. Hello? Oh, um, how do you do, Miss Barnum? Um, I wondered if it could be possible for me to have an appointment with you. Very nice, Mr. Smith, very nice indeed. You must remember to keep this room immaculate. We can't have the children catching any germs while they're napping. No, no, I just left one or two over here in this corner. But don't eat. <laughs> well, maybe this will convince you a man is some use around the house. I'll never be without a man around the house again. Just any old man? Sorry, I have to answer the telephone. No, no, answer me. Answer me, just any man. No, just one particular one. Oh, is it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Right. Do hurry down, won't you? Yeah. Hello? This is Miss Griggs of the Welfare League. One of our sponsors has filed a report criticizing the hiring of a man at the nursery. They insist that you discharge him immediately. Oh, but Miss Griggs, we need a man here. It's entirely out of my hands. Oh. Well, it's a bit difficult to discuss over the telephone. May I come right over? All right. Phone. What are you looking so worried about? Well, they're complaining. It's about one of the boys. Who? Which one? Well, one of my favorites here. Well, stick up for it. I'll back you up. Hmm? Mr. Smith, hmm? the only way you can back me up is... Well, will you promise me now, no matter what happens, not to go back to your old life? Will I? I'm here from now on. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> And that's all you have to tell us about our bill? Well, isn't that enough? Quite, quite. I don't want to hear any more. Yes, it's been awfully sweet of you. I must have the chauffeur take you home in one of the cars. And do you mean I get to sit in the back seat alone? Yes, and not only that, but I must give you a nice present for being so helpful. Here. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It's a little big for me, but, but I'll go into it. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you will. Diamonds and rubies. I bet it cost about a million dollars. Astonishing child. Yes, Bill is, isn't he? Wait. Yes, sir, quite so, sir. It is I, sir. What are you doing here? They found out, sir. Oh. Well, I'm in a dandy fix now. In the language of the gutter, sir, you're right behind the eight ball. Oh, Roberts. How'd they find out? A child named Doodle. Huh? A brat named Doody. As you say, sir, well, she telephoned your fiancé. She's not my fiancé, Robert. She called the whole thing off. Well, she's called it on again now, sir. Everything's set, sir. The ushers and the bridesmaids and the presents are pouring in. Rather nice ones, too. The kind that don't turn green. Oh, Miss Bonham can't change her mind and decide to marry me. Come on, because I've got other plans. I'll phone her right away. Come on, Roberts. I'll tell her a thing or two or three. Let me dial for you, sir. Right. Can't toss me around, Roberts. No, sir. I've got a few things to say to Miss Bonham. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure, I've got a mind of my own. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes. Miss Bonham, please. This is Mr. Drake, the youngest, calling. Really, really. The second man is quite inadequate, sir. I don't know what to do about the servant problem. Hello? Hmm? Hello? Oh, so it's you. Well, I'll go for another time to keep calling me. Hello, Millie. Yes, Millie. Yes, Millie. Yes, Millie. That's right. Sit your letter, sir. Yes, Millie. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Huh? No, Millie. No, don't go down here. 
No, listen, you, you wouldn't like it at all, would she, Roberts? No, sir. Now, Robert says no, sir. No. Millie, well, I'll come up there. Yeah. I'll drop in for dinner. Splendid, darling. I can hardly wait. Goodbye. The man I love. You don't know it, Colonel, but you're giving a reception tonight. Ah, the return of the prodigal son. Why, Colonel, you coined a phrase. Oh, uh, Francis. Yes, miss? We're giving a reception tonight for Mr. Drake. We must have all his favorite dishes for dinner and all his favorite drinks. We must have everything precisely as Mr. Drake likes best. Do you understand? Yes, miss. Colonel, we've got to make Bill realize that this is where he really belongs. I'm quite in accord with you, Millie. Miss Martin, I must insist that you either discharge him or resign. No, I haven't, but I've got something awfully important to tell you. Well, it can wait. Where's Mrs. Murphy? I guess she'll be right down, but please let me tell you what I want to. Here, I said it can wait. Mrs. Murphy? Yes? Look, have you seen Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith? Yes. Oh, he'd go out a little while ago in the big limousine. That's what I wanted to tell you about. And I know all about it, too. Oh, well, did he say anything? Did he leave any message? he never say one word. Well, all right, thank you. All right, dear, what's the matter with you now? Well, I want to show you what I got. I got this, and this, and this. Jody, where in the world did you get that? Mm, that's not the half of it, just wait till you hear the rest. What? Oh. Well, what is it? Now, I knew I suspected him right from the beginning. So, darling, take it easy. You're trembling all over. Oh, well, you'd tremble, too. <laughs> he thought he'd put one over on me, did he? But he? Who? What are you talking about? You just wait and hear the rest. Jody, what is it? Mm. This. Your Bill Smith. Hmm. Bill Smith. William Addington Drake. Huh. And his finance, he gave me this for telling, too. What? Why, Miss Carol, what's the matter? Oh, Dodie, it's just that I love you so much, that's all. Oh, Miss Carol. Miss Carol, I, I, I'm so sorry. Really, I am. Oh, Dodie, you didn't know what you were doing. Well, Miss Millie thought you might like to see these wedding presents that have just come with the guests, sir. Thanks. I think I see Miss Millie's point. Mostly cocktail shakers. <laughs> just because I was tight one night, they seem to think I'm the old soak. Yes, sir. Well, that one night started an awful lot of things, Roberts. Indeed, sir. Things that look as if they were going on. So. Yes, sir. It's no use, Roberts. I can't go through with it. Why should I? Why not have another little nip, sir, just to give us courage for the battle, sir? Yep. Neat, sir? Hmm? Yeah, straight. There you are, sir. Thanks. I don't want to get married. Well, that is, of course, I really do want to, you see. Quite so, sir. Yeah, but not to Millie. That's very well put, sir, and quite clear. But unfortunately, you're engaged to Miss Millie. That, unfortunately, was rather well put, too, Roberts. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There, there. Yes, darling. Oh, do hurry, precious. The guests are waiting. I'll be right with you, sweet. Very good, sir. Just like a husband. Just one second, angel. Don't overdo it, sir. Hmm. My dress now, Roberts. Immaculately, sir. And you have my unbounded support, sir. Thank you, Roberts. So sorry to have kept you waiting, darling. I'd hate to upset your party. Oh, I know you would. You'd be heartbroken, wouldn't you, darling? I should say so, after you staged it so beautifully. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet, my love. <laughs> <laughs> Behold! Don't tell a soul, do you hear? I won't. And the first thing in the morning, when you get the children checked in for the day, you come straight to me. I will. Jody, don't let Trina eat any candy. And be sure Maggie takes the medicine for a cold. And the man-child behaves himself. 
And Uncle Stevie? Well, just kiss him goodbye for me. And you, my darling, just keep your chin up. And don't cry. Will you promise? Mm-hmm. Well, cross your heart. Mm-hmm. Well, do it then. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to drink to the happiness. I can assure the success of the future William Addington Drakes. Here we are. This is to us, dear. Go oh, I'm sorry. Thanks very much. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill, now that you're among friends, how about telling us what really happened? How about having some more wine? Oh, oh, no, 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 folks, yeah. how would you like to hear from William Addington Drake? Oh, well, I, I, know. I give you Mr. William Addington Drake the fourth, who will tell you of his experiences. But who doesn't think you'll find him very interesting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He just went slumming in a day nursery. <laughs> well, what are you making? Here's the whole country looking for him. And he was just around the corner, practicing to be a father. <laughs> oh, there was an added attraction. A young lady, I believe. Isn't that right, Bill? The truth is coming out. Now we're really getting someplace. Yeah, that's right, Millie. There was a young lady. Well, you know, she specialized in trying to put some form of sense into an undeveloped young mind, so I was right where I belonged. Can <laughs> <laughs> you tell us about the great reclamation, Bill? All right. There are a few things I'd like to say. The morning after my last flight of oratory, in a hungover moment of great confusion, I set out to make my own way in the world. Oh. Oh. like Columbus, huh? Yeah, I really was at sea, and I'd have probably starved if somebody hadn't taken me in and fed me. But when I suggested to people, you know, sort of tentatively, that I might do a little work for a little food, they asked me what kind of work I could do. (laughs) (laughs) I should say that was very impertinent of them. Well, anyway, it was most puzzling. What kind of work could I do? What kind of work could I do? Yeah, it got me, too. And what do you suppose I finally found a job doing? Tell us why. Wait till you hear this. Housework. Can you imagine Bill as a housekeeper? General needlework and washing diapers. <laughs> well, you can't do housework unless you're born to it. It's, it's like writing. Or uh, must there might have been a little girl on the premises. Going on, Bill. I get it. So that's how it is, huh? <laughs> no, that's not how it is. Listen, you've got it all wrong, all of you. Oh, I shouldn't expect you to understand. Gosh, I wouldn't have understood myself a few weeks ago. Oh, but uh, you're all changed now, huh, Bill? Yeah, I am, Ellen. I hope so, anyway. From now on, I'm going to get a job and go to work. And when I marry, my wife's going to take care of our house. Can't you just see me making the bed and pushing it into the wall and then cleaning up? I wouldn't know which end of a mop to use. I did housework. Why couldn't you? Because if I wanted to get something done, I'd hire someone to do it for me. And that's just the trouble. None of us have to do anything. And the result is our silly, useless lives. But none of you seem to mind it at all. We'll, we'll have our coffee in the drawing room. Oh, I ought to kill myself. I ought to throw myself off a cliff. No, no, don't. Well, it's all my fault. I'm just a mean, nasty, ugly little girl. And if I'd have kept my nose out of everybody's business, everything would have been all right. Why oh, hate myself? Why don't somebody spank me till I'm black and blue? Well, I think it's more my fault, Doty. I've engineered Bill's whole life, and I haven't made a very good job of it. Well, Miss Carroll would have made up for that. She'd have done a good job with Bill. But I had to ruin everything. But I didn't know. I only did it for Miss Carroll. I, I thought he wasn't good enough for her. But if he's good enough for Miss Carroll, he's good enough for me. Do you know something, Dodie? I think Carol's pretty good for Bill, too, after what he told me last night. What did he tell you? Did he tell you he was in love with you? Not exactly. But I could see her influence on him. He said he wanted to go out and earn his own living. Have a little place his wife could take care of. But at least be something, instead of depending on his family all the rest of his life. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that when I was younger. Well, what did, what's her name? Millie, what did she have to say? 
I don't think she liked the idea. No, oh, she wouldn't. When I was here before, she had to have her butler light her cigarette. But just between you and me, do you think Bill really wants to marry Nellie? No, I don't, Dodie. I think he'd much prefer to marry your Miss Carol. I wrecked that once, but now I've got to fix it. We've just got to get Bill and Carol together and get rid of that Millie. Well, that's more of a program than you know. Millie's on her way. I can get Bill. Oh, Robert. That's easy enough. I can get Miss Carol, too. My grandson up yet? Up and away, sir. I bet I know where he went. Down in the nursery. Look for Miss Carol. That's very probable. Ring him up there, will you, Robert? We won't have had time to get there yet, sir. Hadn't we better wait a few minutes? Very well. There. This ought to bring Miss Carol quick. Dear Carol, I was kidnapped this morning, and I am being held for ransom. They are torturing me, but I am keeping a stiff upper lip. Yeah, watch this. Let me. I'm keeping a stiff upper lip. One of the gang, which has a respect for women, is slipping you this note. You're suffering Dodie. Say, don't you think this is a trifle blood curdling? No, that's what'll get him. All right. Who's this one of the gang, which has a respect for women? Well, we've got to find somebody that, that looks real tough. How about Roberts here? No, he looks too soft. Oh. <laughs> but you look all right. I? Can you snarl and look tough? <laughs> yes. Well, go on. <clears throat> Hurry up. <clears throat> no, not like that. Like this. <clears throat> That's better. Now see that she gets it, and see that she gets right here. And don't forget, look tough and snarl. Roberts? Yes, sir. Send for the car. Yes, sir. Fetch my stick. Yes, sir. I got to slip a note to a woman. And please, Colonel, don't act like a gentleman. Okay, babe. My dear friends and fellow citizens, now is the time to strike. We win our lunch. Everybody, we Where'd she go? Where is she? I don't know where she go. I don't care where she go. And if I know, I don't tell you. But there's something else. You can take it this house, you can take it to bomb Bill. This is Murphy. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Miss Millie. Will you take this, Robert? I'll wait for him here. Oh, hello, darling. It's so good to see you again. Hello. What's the matter? Oh, Miss Millie, we're in an awful mess. Mm -hmm. I guess you came to say goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, Dodie, what are you talking about? You know, I'm awfully sorry. But I did the best I could. Of course you did, darling. Everything worked out quite splendidly. Yes, everything worked out just fine. Mr. Drake's going to marry Miss Carol. Isn't it awful? Well, yes, it would be, child, but happily it isn't true. But it is true, and it's terrible. After I tried so hard to keep him from her. What makes you think they're going to get married? Well, you were there last night. You heard. But I heard, Judy, but I didn't believe a word of it. Well, the Colonel talked to Bill afterward. 
And he said that Bill meant every word about giving away the Drake fortune. And that they were going to live in a little place like a, a telephone booth. And his wife would have to do all the dirty work. You wouldn't like that, would you? No, Dodie, not under any circumstances. And I wouldn't either. But Miss Carroll would, because he's got her hypnotized. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm just sick about the whole thing. Well, the only thing is, Bill couldn't live like that himself. Well, he lived worse than that down at the nursery. That's how I know he's crazy. Having a beautiful home like this and everything he wants, then going down there mopping up the floors and, and wringing out diapers. Well, he's done an awful lot of silly things lately. And I'll bet you he's down at the nursery right now with Miss Carroll. The nursery? With her? Don't he isn't. I bet he is. And I have to call the nursery now, and uh, if you want to, you can listen in and uh, hear his voice. If I do, it'll be the last time I ever listen to him. That's the nursery. I believe it. Hello? Hello? Uh, who is this speaking, please? That's all I wanted to know. Hello? You'll be glad to know, Robert, that you'll never see me again. Miss Millie, that isn't possible. Say that again, will you? Miss Millie, that isn't possible. That's better. Well, your grandfather wants you and her to have lunch with him here. Can you come over right away? Lunch? With Carol? Tell him we'll be right over. Oh, look, tell Robert to fix plenty of everything, because there's going to be lots of company. Come on, kids, we're going to lunch. Hey, how about me? Oh, hell. Come on, babe. How am I doing, Toots? Well, Dory, are you all right? Why in the world did you write that ridiculous note? I think I can explain everything satisfactorily. Yes, I think I can, too. You're the girl from a nursery, aren't you? I don't like your attitude, but I am. Well, I was informed, or evidently misinformed, that Bill was at the nursery with you. He was. As a matter of fact, when he left, I left. I should have known better than to listen to a thoroughly vicious little scamp like you. You little brat! Now, Millie, uh, come on into the other room. Uh, there are a few things I think need explaining. Yes, quite a few. Dodie, what in the world is this all about? Miss Carol, I must talk to you right away, alone. Well, what is it? I can't tell you here. I must be in privacy. Come on. All right, Dodie, what is it? Well, um, I hope you forgive me for all this, but uh, after all, I was the cause of all your troubles. And, and anyway, I just got to get you two together again. Dodie, we don't want to be together again. Maybe you don't want to, but... But he wants you more than anything in the world. How do you know? Because he was down the nursery looking for you. He was? Are you sure? Positively. Well, anyway, I don't want to see him again. Raise your right hand and cross your heart, you don't? Well, hurry up. Do it. He can't be serious. Oh, no, but he's very serious, Millie. Very serious. He won't take a cent from me. Says he's going to live in a back room and wear overalls and carry a dinner pail. The simple life, he calls it. Uh, where do I come in in a simple life? Oh, he's arranged for that, too. Says his wife will stand shoulder to shoulder to him while they're working their way up. Yes, well, if you don't mind, Colonel, I'm going to work my way out. Don't be too hasty, Millie. All right, kids, come on. All right. It's for Come on. Cody, what's that? You don't look very surprised. It's my face, sir. It just won't stand another surprise. <laughs> come on, hurry up, knock it down, man. Thanks, Dave. Come on, boys. Come on, you. Quickly. There's something very familiar about those voices. Come on, hurry up. Robert, this is Uncle Stephen. 
Call him, pal. Yes, son. Let's see, that'll be about 25 extra for lunch, Robert. There's plenty, isn't there? Plenty, sir. Oh, boy, did you hear that, kids? Yeah! Carol. Miss Carol! Hello, children. Oh, hello, Uncle Stevie. How are you? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Man, child, I'm even glad to see you. Are you even glad to see me? We are. Down. Robert, could you hear that? Yes, I gather they want their lunch. Well, do something about it, Robert. Go on, kids, follow Cousin Robert. Children, come. Lunch. Bill's idea, I suppose, of the simple life? Uh, yes, it's what I told you. Hello. 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 Goodbye. Dodie, I think we'd better go. Oh, oh please, please. I'm the one that's going. You can have Bill. Oh, you can carry his dinner pail, and someday maybe you can even wear his overalls, too. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't want him. I wouldn't have him. Well, now, what do you think of that? Well, goodbye, Bill. Seems I can't even give you away. Yeah, it may surprise you all, but I've got something to say about this myself. Now, I didn't mean to... Look, I didn't know when I asked you to marry me. You didn't ask me to marry you. Well, when I said I was in love with you. You didn't say you were in love with me. Well, anyway, I meant it. You meant what? What? Well, I didn't say. You heard what I said. I wouldn't have you in that final. Oh, Carol, this is no reason. Oh. Hmm. Snack. <clears throat> Oh! 